Good evening. Welcome to the Health Partners Team Leadership Annual Meeting. And hello to everyone joining us virtually tonight. We're glad to have all of you joining us. My name is AJ, and I'm an 11th grade student at Apple Valley High School. Our agenda tonight will be first exploring what the TLC is and what we did this year. Then we'll hear a keynote speech by Marcus Pope. And finally, we will have a moderated panel with some of our members to talk more about teen perspectives. Teen leadership programs are important because for teens and our communities, it's important that voices of all ages are heard and valued. What I've enjoyed most about being part of the Teen Leadership Council is the many opportunities we've been given to volunteer for the community. We're excited to share to, with you tonight to learn more about youth adult partnership in our communities. I'm going to hand it to Pahua Hoffman, Senior Vice President of Government and Community Relations for Health Partners. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. How's everybody doing? Oh my God, look at this room. It's amazing. Well, thank you, AJ, for that welcome. And thanks to all of you for being here, both in the room and online. It's an honor to provide some welcome remarks for today's program entitled Empowering Youth to Become Resilient Leaders. When I heard that the program, when I heard this program description, um, I think about young people and what you all have lived through in these last several years. And I look at your faces and I'm in awe. I'm also reminded of my own experience as a young person long ago, navigating the world with English limited immigrant parents as the oldest child and being called to take on adult-like roles. I was really not prepared to take on when I just wanted to be like everybody else. Here's what I will say, these experiences I had, which felt like burdens back then, served me well today. Even if at times they were unwelcomed, perhaps they were gifts all along in learning about my own resiliency. For these reasons, I am proud of the work that Health Partners is doing and wants to do more of to support youth development, either from activating self-agency around civic engagement, to centering youth voice in our healthcare model, or to recognizing and appreciating the different and intersecting ways you show up in and for your family, for and with your community, and the impact all of this has had or will have on your future pursuit to live a life of impact. I'm so excited that you will get to hear from my friend and our keynote speaker, Marcus Pope. It was he who said to me once, we love a beating the odds story, but we rarely talk about actually changing the odds for young people. An important part of changing the odds for young people is for adults to do better. We need to listen more and work closer with young people. And in so many ways, you are ahead of us in your transformational thinking. And often you are closest to the issues that need changing. And that is work I wanna help support at Health Partners through partners like Youth Prize and also directly in the community where I live. With that, it is my honor to introduce you to Sylvia, a Teen Leadership Council member, to tell you more about TLC. Hello everyone, I'm Sylvia Holly, an 11th grader at Mounds Park Academy. The TLC develops the next generation of resilient leaders by amplifying youth voice and giving them a platform to make change in our communities. The TLC utilizes a youth-led model of share power that facilitates collective action between youth and community organizations and engages youth from across all communities. 
The goals of the TLC are to provide intentional opportunities for youth to participate and develop positive connections to people and places, <laughs> engage youth in activities to develop passion and commitment, as well as to make a difference in the community, to create space for opportunities for youth to share their input and voice, and as well as share power and decision-making authority between youth and adults. The TLC is comprised of high school students from around the Twin Cities metro area and the Western Wisconsin. This year, we have 17 members from 11 different schools. Due to the wide variety of communities in which the TLC members are a part of, each of them brings an invaluable, diverse perspective to each discussion, which is essential when consulting on areas of health and wellness. Because the TLC is a team-led and facilitated and empowered by adults around us, we have agency within the council to make decisions according to our own passions and interests. When we don't always have those opportunities in similar facets, like the TLC. My favorite thing about the TLC is the many opportunities for advocacy. I truly love how the program encourages and allows us to explore our passions and learn about the systemic issues um, within areas of health. The TLC also provides resources and independence to investigate more about these subjects, truly embodying the teen-led nature of the council. Throughout the year, the TLC has participated in public work health workshops, volunteering, consulting, leadership, skill building activities, and team bonding. These activities have enabled us to become educated about and explore different dimensions of health and their impact on our communities. Through these various activities, we have been able to create tangible change, vocalize our thoughts and share insights and assist real life programs, explore our strengths and develop skills to grow as a team and a leader. With that, Sally, and Gavin are going to share a little bit more about what the TLC has been doing this year. Hello, everyone. I'm Sully, a 12th grader at Simley High School. Hi, everyone. I'm Gavin. I'm a 12th grader attending St. Thomas Academy. And as Sylvia mentioned, we have five pillars or areas of focus um, that guide what we work on and what we do with our time at the TLC. <clears throat> We strive to work in every, every area of focus with all activities we participate in. It has been a very diverse year and we are excited to share with you some of the things we have been working on. So the first pillar the TLC commits to is public work health or public health workshops, which are opportunities that uh, to learn about the many different factors that contribute to a person's health, including social drivers of health. Members thoroughly enjoy the workshops especially because they give us an opportunity to collaborate and learn. For Mental Health, National Alliance on Mental Illness, or NAMI, came to do an Ending the Silence workshop with the TLC where we dove deeper into the <laughs> specifics of mental illness. Members learned what a mental illness may look like, symptoms, and how we as teens can help. Oh, sorry. The second pillar is volunteering. Service is a huge part of the TLC and all members enjoy helping our communities. This year, there were many volunteer events that the TLC was part of. One of our first outings was volunteering for Feed My Starving Children. Members put on their hairnets, got in a station and assembled packaged meals, which consisted of soy, rice, dried vegetables, minerals, and vitamins. Together, we packed over 88 boxes of meals. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, another outing the TLC was a part of was the St. Paul Opportunity Center. Members assisted in preparing meals for homeless people. It was described as fast paced and there was a lot of people to serve. The TLC helped serve nearly 200 homeless people and was able to make a large impact with such small actions. Members enjoyed the good feeling that came with the thanking of the people being served and also enjoyed the bonding time. Along with that, the TLC partnered with the Steve Rumler Hope Network to package overdose prevention kits. We packed naloxone kits, also known as Narcan, and fentanyl test strip kits. Members of the TLC were able to package over 200 naloxone kits and 248 fentanyl test strips. With these numbers combined, the TLC helped prevent over 1,344 opioid overdoses throughout this volunteering opportunity. Our third pillar is consulting. This is a favorite among the members. Adults submit consulting requests to the TLC to partner with us and learn teen insights to incorporate into their projects. 
Members on the TLC enjoy being able to be a voice and we love and voice, excuse me, we love voicing our opinions and thoughts on work we are often not asked about but still affects us. This year, the TLC met with Dr. Singh from Health Partners who's with us tonight. So let's give everyone a round of applause to thank her for coming out and talking to us. Um, and she wanted to, wanted to know our opinions and thoughts on the topics of teens and screen time. The consultation was meant to inform how pediatricians could talk to teens about screen time during appointments. Healthy communication and usage surrounding technology was discussed and used to inform the pediatric department at Health Partners. Another consultation the TLC did this year was for every meal an organization working to address child food insecurity by filling the gaps children face when not in school on the weekends. The program coordinators came to get our insights on an expanded weekend meal program for high school students. We discussed how every meal can help teens feel comfortable visiting a food shelf at school and what types of food teens would want to receive through this program. The fourth pillar the TLC participates in is leadership skill building. At the beginning of every year, the TLC members participate in the Strength Finders Assessment. After, after taking the assessment, members are able to pinpoint uh, or pinpoint and identify their top five strengths and apply them to, to their participation in the TLC and how they can best work with others. Throughout the year, members use the strengths to collaborate with each other to lead projects such as planning and facilitating meetings, writing monthly newsletters, coordinating booth and outreach activities, strategizing for recruitment, and many others. Another way members were able to work on our leadership skills is through participating in Youth Day at the Capitol. This year, a few TLC members attended and had the opportunity to meet with state legislators, speak out against gun violence in schools, and advocate for control. As one of the members who was able to attend Youth Day at the Capitol, I will share a bit of my experience. Um, the day consisted of classes on advocacy, hearing important figures like the governor speak, and being able to speak with legislators using our prepared script. I really enjoyed being able to see the inner workings at the Capitol, and I especially enjoyed being able to speak out against such a prominent issue in our country. And finally, the last pillar is team bonding. Though all the, through all the pillars, the TLC also takes time to strengthen the team. Being from so many different communities, we value building connections and strengthening them with one another. Team bonding also takes place through icebreakers at the beginning of every meeting, retreats throughout the year, and other fun activities like an escape room. Okay. Personally, what I enjoyed most about the TLC is the pillars we follow. I believe they are deeply rooted in service and learning, which are two things that I enjoy. The pillars create the perfect balance of work and connection on the council. They have made every single part of the TLC beneficial to me, and I feel prepared not only to pursue a career in healthcare, but prepared enough to become a functioning adult in society. So my favorite part of the TLC was being able to explore the health field through New Lens. Before TLC, I never really thought about the different aspects that played into health. Um, I found it very interesting uh, to be able to learn through all the opportunities what health actually means to individuals. Given that I want to pursue a career in healthcare, it was beneficial for me to gain this experience because going forward, I felt like it has allowed me to better connect with people who have a different perspective and belief of what health is. Along with this, I absolutely loved volunteering at all the events. They were super happy to have us and it built connections that last and it just shows that it like, makes you feel good and it makes you want to go back. So I love that. All right. All right, um, we're going to have, we're going to welcome Miriam up to share um, with you next. Hi, my name is Miriam and I'm a ninth grader at Mount Zoo High School. And each year the TLC creates a video to give members the opportunity to share in their own words why youth development programs like the Health Partners Teen Leadership Council are important for teens. Like everything within the TLC, the planning and production of this video project is teen-led. In this video, we share what makes Teen Leadership Council so special to each of us and how it has impacted us this year, how we have helped make a difference in our community and what we have learned this year together and through each other. A special thank you to Rena and Zainab 
who helped record us all, and to Sylvia, who helped put this video together. And of course, Andrea, Jade, and Kirsten. This year would not have been possible without them. We are excited to play this video for you now. Very fascinating. Community. Life-changing. Community. Opportunity. The Health Partners Power Up Team Leadership Council is a team that council comprised by high school students from Minnesota and Western Wisconsin. We're youth consultants and team advocates who advocate for health and wellness within our various communities through volunteering, community service activities, various consultations with different campaigns with health partners, such as Making It Okay. And we also take a lot of to learn about different healthcare communities. A little bit about the Team Leadership Council is Team Leadership Council is basically, it strives to make future leaders in the community. And that's why I think that TLC is a way for us, uh, the next leaders of our community, to have a, uh, to broaden our horizon by uh, these service projects that we do in Team, team Leadership Council. I feel like programs like the TLC are useful for the community because they allow doctors and other professionals to learn about what teenagers want. I think that Team Leadership Council is very important for our community and for teenagers here um, because it's a way to find more opportunities in healthcare and to just broaden our horizon, learn more and to make new friends. I believe the things we do at the TLC and the different programs we have are important for teens due to the fact that we educate ourselves on different health topics such as mental health or disorders or even like addiction as well. Right. It's really important for teens to be a part of something like the TLC so they are connected to a community of people that care about changing the world just as much as they do. I think the TLC is a great place for teens because um, it helps teenagers find a place where they, they not only can learn a lot from, uh, from kids across a variety of backgrounds, but also we learn a lot of different in ways we can make change even in is on a small scale. And because change does start on a small scale, I think the TLC does help um, it does help in positively affecting a broader community. TLC really changed my perspective on what health means. Because before to me, health was medicine. And it's so much broader than that. And going into my future education and career, knowing that and experiencing it will be incredibly beneficial both for me and people in communities that I'll be able to help. The TLC has impacted me through allowing me to see strength and vulnerability. And it's also allowed me to take different risks to go into different activities that I I didn't see myself participating in before from in and outside. My favorite activity that we've done at the TLC is the escape room because I loved how much of community building it was and how much fun it was working together. My favorite thing that I've done with the TLC was volunteering to feed my starving children. One of my favorite things that we have done to secure the TLC is go to feed my starving children. It was fun to package the food. My favorite thing I've done with the TLC so far has been packing opioid prevention kits because it's really interesting to learn about and things like that. I would recommend the TLC to other teams because it's fun and there's a lot of learning opportunities. I would recommend the TLC to other teams because it is a good opportunity for them to meet new people and to explore different health backgrounds. The reason why I would recommend it to my friend or anyone is team leadership really um, helped me in uh, learning more about healthcare and just making new friends and coming out of my comfort. So that's why I really love TLC.
why I would recommend the TLC to other teens is because it's fun to learn new experiences and get out of their little personal space. Well, TLC is a great way to become a better person in general, to improve your leadership qualities that always already exist and to get to know them better and their weaknesses. Um, it's also a great way to find um, real, I mean, to expose yourself to real world problems and get out there and be a part of the action plan for making a better community. This video will also be available to watch and share with others online after tonight's event. And now I'd like to invite Rena up to introduce our keynote speaker for tonight. Hello, my name is Rena Nijan and I'm a senior at Egan High School. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you tonight our keynote speaker, Marcus Clark. Marcus is the president of Youth Rise, where he works with their board of directors to oversee grant making, policy advocacy, communications, development, and special initiatives. Marcus lives a career of service and has served in directorial positions for many organizations, including but not limited to the University, of, the Institute on Domestic Violence in the African American Community at the University of Minnesota, and the youth programs for the Neighborhood Involvement Program in Minneapolis. He has authored numerous works that address youth engagement and leadership, education, and intimate partner violence. And in 2020, Marcus received a Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal 40 Under 40 Award for his leadership and service to the Twin Cities. Now he has Youth Prize's dedicated mission to increase equity with and for Minnesota's disadvantaged youth. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Mr. Marcus Trump. Thank you. Thank you. I want to start by thanking health partners, the Teen Leadership Council, and my friend Pahua Hoffman for the opportunity to speak with you today. I always cherish moments to talk about young people. They're brilliant and the ways adults can become better partners to improve our community. As someone who has spent the majority of his career in youth development, which includes almost 12 years at Youth Prize, I continue to grow in my amazement of young people and their capacity to change our institutions for the better. In preparation for today, I had the privilege of deepening my knowledge about the Teen Leadership Council at Health Partners. The TLC is yet another example of how youth are making positive contributions while also learning and growing as they make a difference in society. Over the past four years, more than 50 young people across 14 communities have been engaged in a meaningful school year experience. Examining the social drivers of health in the various dimensions of well being. Their major motivator for participation has been a desire to expand their thinking about health and to identify tangible ways to positively impact their community. Members of the TLC have grown so much through team building leadership training, and workshops facilitated by experts from health partners and beyond. They have gained invaluable insight and practical experiences not afforded by traditional school curriculum. TLC members have also consulted with leaders across sectors, offering expertise grounded in their experiences as young people. Those seeking advice include the chair of pediatrics at Health Partners, who wisely sought the perspectives of youth to inform revisions to the Well Child Visit Survey that is administered to young people system-wide. Other Health Partners divisions, as well as local public health departments and nonprofits have also benefited from the expertise of the TLC. Indeed, TLC members are both learning and serving. Their journey has included volunteerism, 
resulting in hours of vital support to local organizations addressing poverty, food insecurity, isolation, and opioid addiction. However, recognizing the systemic nature of such issues, the TLC has also engaged in advocacy at the state capitol, voicing the need for reforms in the areas of homelessness, mental health, and gun control. The TLC has unapologetically accepted and are acting on what took far too long for health policymakers to adequately embrace, which is the fact that individual health is influenced by a range of social and economic factors. In other words, health is not just a medical issue confined to hospitals, doctor's offices, and medical facilities. It is also a social problem that requires more attention to systems, structures, and inequitable community conditions. But it shouldn't be a surprise to us that the TLC has caught on so quickly to these social drivers of health. From women's rights to civil rights and in efforts to protect our environment, young people have historically been at the forefront of social change. Their courage has always challenged the status quo and led to major paradigm shifts. So part of my job here today is to remind you of the passion and brilliance of young people and to stress the importance of adults embracing youth as experts of their lived experience. I am clear that young voices should be heard and youth without question should be enlisted as key contributors for the betterment of our institutions, communities, and society overall. But I have to be fully transparent. I've had moments of doubt, times when I've had to ask myself if I was in the right profession. These instances of uncertainty have come while parenting a nine-year-old who is going on 16. <laughs> and helping to raise my nephew who is now 17. See, my nine-year-old believes strongly in child and youth voice. <laughs> in simplest terms, she loves to be the boss. Similarly, my 17-year-old nephew, who is like a son, has also been a huge contributor to my momentary desires to leave the profession I love so dearly and to denounce the value of youth in society. <laughs> I recall a moment not too long ago when the doctrine of adultism was mighty tempting. <laughs> it was a Sunday evening when my nephew very quiet and in a manner where he thought I could not hear him, uh, unjustifiably accused me of tweaking. This accusation was made because I agreed with his mother who declined his request to ride with friends from St. Paul to Rosemount at 9 p.m. in the middle of a major snowstorm. <laughs> this wasn't an emergency situation. He wanted to go play pickup basketball. After deep thought, trying to empathize with a youth perspective, perspective that's what I was trained to do. <laughs> I just couldn't understand how I was labeled as tweaking, which according to the slang dictionary means behaving in a wildly excited or agitated manner, especially as an effect of using meth, cocaine, or other stimulant drugs. I was so confused as to how I was assigned this label, especially given the circumstances. He had school the next day and the designated driver was inexperienced due to being 17 years old. So my parenting situations have challenged me and has caused at times my belief in youth leadership to wane <laughs> like that first dose of the COVID vaccine. <laughs> but despite the challenges, it has been wonderful to watch the young people in my life 
grow and develop before my eyes. And I've come to more intimately understand how the challenging behaviors, which a lot of the parents know about, <laughs> which are indeed difficult to bear, are also developmentally appropriate. Early theorists have termed adolescence as a period of storm and stress. The use of this language is heavily critiqued by contemporaries, but, it was what, but what is not debated is the recognition that young people undergo significant physical, cognitive, and social changes throughout adolescence. So in many ways, navigating adolescence is a resilient act within itself. In witnessing young people navigate this challenging period with an unrelenting desire to contribute to their community has served as a potent booster shot, giving me hope for the present and the future. The resilience of our youth cannot be questioned, I think Pahua mentioned. And as I reflect, I'm clear they have recently encountered situations that are almost unimaginable. Please indulge me and let's go back in time three and a half years. Imagine that I could predict the future and I'm talking to young people about the challenges ahead. This is what I would likely say. Young people, you are about to experience a global pandemic. You will survive, but it will be difficult. A stay at home order will be imposed. The economy will essentially shut down. Jobs will be lost. And businesses considered essential to the fabric of our communities will close. Teenage workers will most certainly be furloughed or lose their first job due to no fault of their own. No worries. There will be stimulus and un expanded unemployment benefits much of which you won't be able to access because you're still enrolled in high school. Although the pandemic will be tough, there will be masks and vaccines to help. Clorox bleach will be widely available <laughs> and there will be uses suggested for disinfectant spray that go well beyond sanitizing surfaces. <laughs> but don't be fooled by wild ideas. Stockpiling large quantities of toilet paper won't trigger immunity to the virus. There will be great social and political division. Some experts will characterize the period as the most polarized in American history since the Civil War. Some adults will tell you the vaccine is safe, while others will adamantly discourage you from getting vaccinated. You will enter spaces where masks are embr embraced, expected, and required. And you will also experience encounters where the sight of a mask will lead to anger and rage. There will be a contentious national election and allegations of voter fraud will lead to a group of rebels or patriots, depending on who you talk to, successfully breaching our nation's capital as they attempt to overthrow our government. School and social life will be disrupted. Most of you will be forced to engage in distance learning where your teacher, who in some cases has yet to upgrade to a smartphone, like one of my board members, will facilitate learning via Zoom or go Google Meet. During distance learning, you will be tempted by video games, social media, and other online activities. But stay focused on learning and keep your video on as you experience countless technical difficulties, including people talking and talking and talking while they're on mute. You will eventually go back to school, but the Delta variant will force many school staff to quarantine. Substitute after substitute will make learning difficult, am I lying? And labor shortages will also make it a challenge to even get to school due to a lack of bus drivers. 
many will lose loved ones without being able to adequately say goodbye. I know I did. Or lay their loved ones to rest. Widespread pain, loss, and trauma will be at levels not seen in decades. And those who are able to bear it will watch an eight minute and 60 second video that will make the majority of us question the century in which we are living. Civil unrest will ensue and bold statements will follow the murder of George Floyd that will come to represent in many cases, unfulfilled commitments to address racial inequity. This is what young people have experienced. And you all have persevered in the midst of a pandemic and other unimaginable circumstances. But I was reminded when talking with the leader of a local nonprofit, I think she's here today, that there was a pandemic in Minnesota well before the onset of COVID-19. This leader shared a story that surfaced the terrible inequities in our community, but also strikingly illustrated how social and economic circumstances can impact health, well-being, and life outcomes. She shared the story of a young person who got in trouble with the law. He made some mistakes, stealing clothing from a department store, and he was also caught in the middle of a carjacking. He wasn't having much success in school. His attendance, grades, and social relationships were poor. Behind all of the problematic behavior, was a young person who didn't have heat or running water at home. Clean clothes or the ability to take a bath or shower was not a reality for him at home. Food insecurity was a constant struggle. Making matters worse, his father died an untimely death, projecting his mother unexpectedly into single parenthood. Resources for the family to cope with this pain of Southern loss was non-existent. And multiple disabilities added complexity for the mother as she confronted raising her children on her own. The family's living quarters lacked the proper utilities to live comfortably, making studying and engaging in learning at home out of the question. School was not a fun place for this young man either. The smell, dirty clothes, and everything else that comes with poverty traveled with him to school and made bullying a common occurrence. Although the challenges this young man faced are heartbreaking, I'm not sharing this story to justify bad behavior. But instead, my goal is to highlight the conditions that impact behavior and outcome. And therefore, my call to action today is for us to stop applying ineffective band-aids to problems that ultimately lead to metal bars that are unlikely to rehabilitate. I'll say it again since I got a clap. <laughs> My call to action today is for us to stop applying ineffective band-aids to problems that ultimately lead to metal bars that are unlikely to rehabilitate. Y'all can clap again if you want. <laughs> the TLC is challenging us to look at the root causes of issues in order to respond with meaningful solutions that uplift our entire community. I'm convinced we cannot afford to just focus on individuals. 
while letting systems, structures, and inequitable community conditions off the hook. If we are truly concerned about health, then we must address the underlying conditions that lead to negative health outcomes. For example, no young person should ever have greater access to illegal guns than fresh produce. And children should not be relegated to living in homes that lack heat and running water. In the midst of what seems to be insurmountable complexity, the TLC at Health Partners and young people across the state are wrestling with these systemic issues. Why can't we join them? Adults, why can't we join them? Let's join our resilient youth in promoting health equity in Minnesota. Thank you. I'm not going to steal your stage quite yet, um, but we'll open up the floor for any questions that folks have. For those of you in the room, you should receive three index cards on your turn. Uh, if you want to jot down questions at any time, um, there's a little Q&A we have some people who will be going around. I'm just going to steal your microphone. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll have folks go around and collect those question cards, and then we'll bring on up here for Marcus. For those of you attending online, to use the Q&A chat box. We do have a staff person who is monitoring that. They'll write down your questions and bring them up to Marcus as well. And so we'll leave Q&A open until about 7.15 and then we'll continue on. You don't want them to read this, right? Uh, oh, okay. Read off. Happy to answer questions. Okay. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I'm always learning from young people. Um, we have some board members here and our founder, Wokey Wea is here today. Please give her a round of applause. Um, always learning and being challenged by young people. And, you know, I don't always agree with young people and I don't always, you know, and so I've always, I've had to grow, you know, folks on the board know, know you know, there have been times where I've had differences of opinion with youth board members and youth on staff, and I've grown in my kind of thinking and knowledge and I've had to, you know, adapt to changing environment, changing circumstances. So that's been good. I think it keeps me fresh. I think it keeps me cool, even though they don't think I'm very cool. I'm perceived as old, but it's good to be around young people and it's good to keep learning and growing. And I'm I'm doing that at Youth Prize. All right, let's see. Um, so how does it feel to be a person that makes change with youth? It's, it's, it's powerful. Um, in my speech, I talked about young people not being able to access unemployment benefits during the pandemic. But one of the things we did at Youth Prize is we worked with young people during the pandemic to fight uh, to get uh, unemployment benefits for high school students. Uh, the, the federal government passed something called the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program. And so the state was denying young people uh, in Minnesota those benefits as well as regular state unemployment benefits. So we actually ended up uh, suing the state uh, for those benefits. And I see Brian back there shaking his head. He was the person I on the board, one of the people I we had to convince to do it. And he was like, go do it, right? I can't tell you, because uh, this is live stream, what he told me, but he was all for us suing the state. And we did that. And over $35 million was paid out to young people all across the state. And young people led that effort. And then, so that happened in 2020 through our lawsuit, we, we sued the state for denying benefits. But then in 2021, we changed the state law that uh, denied young people benefits just by virtue of being in high school. 
And we had a young person on our board because half of our board is comprised of young people named Malcolm. He was working at Subway, getting ready for school. Subway told him to go apply for benefits. And of all the other workers that weren't in high school, they got benefits, but he didn't because he just because he was in high school. And so um, we had advocates on our board because they had the lived experience and they didn't, you know, and he needed to go to high school and he's still, he's in college now in California, but he got his benefits over time. All right, let me go, let me see what else we got here. What's the most impactful thing about health that you learned directly from you? So there's a lot of things I've learned, but I'll tell you uh, back in what year was this? The Northside Research Team. What year was that, Brian? Uh, 2014. We were um, engaged with some young people around health equity. So they wanted to do some, you know, just some work, some community engagement, some research. So that's when we started doing participatory research with young people for them to go out and be the knowledge producers and do the research. And they were researching health equity. They recognized the fact that, you know, North Minneapolis, it was a food desert. Some of their research was used to bring additional grocery stores into North Minneapolis. And then they blew my mind because they were talking about health equity. And they were after we kind of addressed food and food deserts, the next issue they took on was policing. And I'm like, health equity and policing? And they started talking about the mental health implications of the way their community was over policed. And they were making linkages that um, I was like, wow, y'all making these linkages to health equity and policing. And they did all this research. They brought in a room like this, they brought the chief of police. Was the mayor there woke in? Somebody was, there were all these leaders there. Listen to the young people. And the young people, the people didn't do anything, you know. And they talked about how great the young people were and all their research. And then what was it? A month later, Jamar Clark, it was a major high profile murder of a young black man in North Minneapolis. And then they called the young people back and because of the high profile incident and still did nothing. And then we had George Floyd and young people were calling this issue out to us years ago in terms of policing and its impact on health and its impact on community. So that's one of the things I learned uh, from young people. So you've challenged adults this evening. Do you have any advice for adults? I think, hopefully I put a little bit in there in the, in the remarks, but I think when we have jewels like the Teen Leadership Council, we need to support these jewels and we need to expand the reach of uh, initiatives like this. And listen, you know, listen and act. You know, it's not just about listening. Uh, we do a lot of asking for input, um, but oftentimes young people tell us things that when we're in our bureaucratic kind of boxes that are hard to implement, but don't let that stop you. Just because a young person tells you something that you think can't be done. Um, there's a lot of young people throughout history that have said things that can't be done. And we've moved society because of their leadership. So just know that. Um, so another question is around what um, what can adults learn in order to effectively partner? Um, so partnership, you know, I talk a lot about youth leadership, but partnership is the highest level of operation when it comes to really advancing youth leadership. Am I right, Wokey? Working in partnership. And it's not just about say, here, go take the keys, run, you know. It's about really working with young people and being in that partnership. And young people um, want to contribute, but a lot of times our institutions are, we only ask young people to come into our institutions and figure out how to work within our framework to get something done. And we need to meet young people halfway. You know, I talk about our board is have young people and we do training for our adults as well as with the youth about like, how do we create shared space? and it's difficult, you know, and sometimes with parenting, you know, it's hard to create that shared space, but um, we need to create that shared space and there's work that we need to do um, because there's some mental models and things that we have embedded in the way we operate that need to shift if we want to create an environment for youth to be able to thrive and really contribute. 
how do you change adults' perspectives about youth, especially those in position of power? I think as adults, we have to be honest about the ways in which we're lacking. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you look at, you know, things that we've seen occur in our communities and in societies and where we preside over these things as adults. And we allow some of those things to happen. A lot of the story about the pandemic, you know, everything and young people are watching. Um, so when I talk to young people, they don't think we as adults have it all figured out. They don't. Um, and they know when we're not telling them the truth. You know, they know, you know, they see our inconsistencies. And so I just think we have to model, um, we need to be kind of honest about ourselves and model the type of behaviors that we want to see in our community. Anything else? I think I hit them all. Okay, what originally inspired you to work with you? You asking for another keynote right here. <laughs> so I tell a story about um, when I was a young person, I was working at the Science Museum of Minnesota. and I started working at 14 and I was directing camp. I started out as a camp counselor and I was really young and I would, I would be all over the Metro as a camp counselor and eventually as a camp director. And so I would go and I would see the difference in, you know, we would have uh, grant funded camps for low income kids. And then we would have camps where it was fee for service. Parents would pay for their kids to go camp. And there would be kids that, um, that you you would you would have lessons and they had been all around the world and they could talk about in those lessons the experiences they had around the world when we were teaching science and then I was working with kids in St. Paul that had never been to Minneapolis and kids from Minneapolis that had never traveled to St. Paul and I saw the inequities that's what we call it now I didn't have the language for it but I saw the inequities in our community and I knew I wanted to do something about that um I didn't have the, you know, so I went to the U and undergrad, I did, you know, sociology would gave me an explanation for some things, a way to explain, you know, inequities in our community and focused on youth development and kept doing work and got sucked in to Youth Prize with Wokey and she had me out here doing all kinds of crazy stuff, um, pushing systems, but she had my back while we were doing that. And we've done a lot of advocacy work. So just the systemic work of, of youth prize is what's most what is what I really adore. That's my passion center, is really being able to, you know, help young people on a day to day, but to really do work to drive system change, which is really needed. I think we can have programs and program, we won't program our way out of the issues that we have in our community. It's about programming to raise the consciousness and the awareness. Um, but once we do that, we have to shift the way our systems work. How much, how are we doing on time? How do you deal with the situation? Oh, this is a great question. How do you deal with a situation when your wisdom gained from age and experience is contrary to a youth perspective? So one thing I'm, I always say, youth aren't always right, okay? Um, the problem is we often exclude the perspectives and the ideas of young people Nobody's always right. And so I think we have to come in understanding that. So I will go toe to toe with a young person on our board, on our staff, and I do that. And sharing my perspective, sharing my experience, sharing my wisdom um, as an older adult, um, because it's about that partnership. And so I, I won't hold back. It's not fair to young people to have experiences that can help guide their thinking and not share those and not impart those. And, you know, for me, I always have, I have a number of sort of mentors and elders that I always call on. Um, and that's a part of my common practice. And I encourage young people to do that as well. And it's not that you always agree with everything the elder says. Um, and there's oftentimes some translation, you know, um, because they're still using the, the flip phones, you know, so you have to, you have to translate some stuff, but, um, but it's important to have elders in your life. I'll say this, I'm looking at the young people um, and I benefit a lot from it, from elders. You know, I, I'm come from someone who has a grandmother, you know, my grandmother died, you know, in 20, um, 2006. 
And my grandmother only had an eighth grade education, but she was the smartest, wise, uh, wisest person that I, you know, that I ever encountered. And so I do believe in the value of experience and in in what elders can do to contribute to young people. And I, and I, and I share that with young people. Thank you for this opportunity. Appreciate it. Go ahead. One last one. I think you have to keep trying, keep trying and keep trying. Um, find allies, adult allies that can um, be on your team um, and just don't give up. Uh, and then here's the other thing you know, and I learned this at Youth Prize over 10 years, you will get older, okay? So as you get older, that's profound. That's really profound. As you get older, remember, okay? Remember and and be different, okay? All right. Alrighty. Well, hello everyone. My name is Jade Hip, and I'm one of the TLC program staff. And tonight I have the honor of moderating our teen panel discussion. Woo! But I'm not the star here, our teens are. Uh, but first, before we transition, I just want to quick give a big thank you to Marcus speaking at tonight's event. Uh, your insights and perspective are truly valuable, and your passion for youth development really shines through, and we are all grateful for the knowledge and inspiration that you shared with us. So, thank you. All righty, and at this time, I would like to invite our teen panelists up to the front. Alrighty, so now I got to try to talk loud, but bear with me. I have a cold, so <laughs> I'm going to try my best. Um, so I know all of your guys' pictures and information is up on the screen, but would you just take a moment to briefly introduce yourself for the group today? My name is Monka. I'm a ninth grader, and I go to Forest Lake High School. My name is Zainab. I'm a 10th grader, and I go to Mounds Park Academy. I'm Max. I'm also a 10th grader at Mounds Park Academy. My name is Elizabeth, and I'm an 11th grader at Highland Park Senior High School. My name is Aiden, and I am a 10th grader at Stillwater High School. Thank you. So to get us started, I have a couple questions that I'll hand off to the panel, um, but similar fashion to what we did with Marcus. So just use the leftover uh, index cards that you have at your seat to jot down any questions. We'll still have folks coming around to uh, collect those. Um, same thing for online participants. Feel free to use the chat box and we'll have those come up to the front. Uh, we'll try to get through as many questions as we can in our short time. So um, let's get started. So my first question for the panel is just what stood out to you most about uh, Marcus's keynote and the information that he talked about? Um, what stood out most to me about um, Marcus's panel? Oh, sorry. Um, what stood out most to me about um, Marcus's um, keynote speech was how change is really provoked through not only listening, but also taking action. And I think that that's key to like, um, Marcus mentioned how like programs like the TLC are very integral in kind of just raising awareness um, on different issues that are prevalent within our communities, but at the end of the day, we need to take action to see that change um, being acted upon as well. First of all, again, a big thanks to Marcus for the speech. It was really wonderful. Um, I think what struck me is the idea that health is not about the individual. Health is about the systems that make up our world. And I think the reason that struck me is that I believe I'm the only person on the Teen Leadership Council who has no interest in any healthcare profession in my future. Uh, I want to go into sociology. So I think that it's important to look at health anyways, because the systems in the world that we live in is health. And we can't solve the inequalities in our health 
without solving the inequalities in our systems and vice versa. Something that stood out to me from Marcus's speech was the idea of partnership, um, the partnership between young people and adults. And sometimes there can be tensions between adults and youth resulting from misunderstandings or just different perspectives. And I would say that we, the biggest thing is if you want to be understood, you should first be understanding and you should turn to the other's perspective first in order to be understood. Because if you wanna break that boundary, you need to understand the other person. Katie. So moving on to our second question, and then we'll open it up to the audience. Uh, what is a top issue right now for teens? And what would you like adults to know about that issue? Um, I think that one top issue for teens at the moment is mental health and more so not only the stigma that's around it, but also how adults kind of talk to teenagers about mental health and I think something very essential that um, Marcus also mentioned in his speech is kind of like the understanding between like adults and teenagers. And I think that adults need to take time to actually understand how teens are feeling and what they can do to help them. Um, there isn't really a right or wrong answer with mental health, but just kind of being there willing to listen um, can really provoke a lot of different changes. So I think that that is something that um, needs to be changed. Um, I think one of the top issues for teens right now is digital literacy, especially because in today's day and age, misinformation spreads faster than actual like facts. And um, because of that, I think, Obviously, it's important for everyone to understand that everyone is vulnerable to the spread of misinformation. And while teens seem more vulnerable, the reality really is that it can happen to anyone. And I feel like as a result, it's just, again, what Aiden, it's kind of similar to what Aiden was saying, it's important to be understanding so you can be understood. Uh, one problem I think that we, like, teens struggle with a lot is balancing their school life and their, like, extracurriculum life. Um, sometimes they just need to talk with their parents to, like, find a good balance because sometimes it just gets too much and then you are expected to do more for school and your extracurriculums at the same time. So writing off what Aiden said, it's just about communicating with each other and finding that perfect balance. So I think I'm going to transition us to a couple audience questions because we're getting a lot in. Um, so one that came from uh, folks in the room is some young people don't believe in themselves enough to participate in leadership opportunities like the TLC, or they are dealing with difficulties. What advice do you have for them and what can adults do to support them? Um, uh, some young people don't believe in themselves enough to participate in leadership opportunities like the TLC, or they are dealing with difficulties. What advice do you have for them, and what can adults do to support them? I think that you should just try. At the end of the day, there's no kind of, there might not ever be like the right day where you're ever going to feel like, yes, like today's the day I'm going to just try and do it. Like that should be today. Um, it's never necessarily going to come as like the perfect time, the perfect place, or like the perfect set of actions to lead you to kind of participating in the kinds of activities that you'd like. You kind of really have to make that opportunity for yourself. And speaking from personal experience, when I first um, heard about the Teen Leadership Council, it was actually really close to the deadline. And 
my mom was actually the one who told me that I should like apply to join. And had I not joined the Teen Leadership Council, I honestly don't know where I'd be in leadership throughout like all of high school. And I think that just making that ability to just try and being willing to take risks and kind of not necessarily worrying about the aftermath if you're careful and safe with it, obviously, um, that's like really important to kind of just taking the first step because after you try to do something and are willing to take a risk to achieve something that you set out for yourself to accomplish, um, everything after that is a lot easier. I think when it comes to how adults can support kids in trying to find that confidence in themselves, you have to be inspiring and you have to be compassionate. And I'm looking at my mom because she's really good at this. Um, I was not, when I, when I was trying to find out where to go to high school, I was I just thought I was going to go to the public school. I didn't want to apply to any private schools. And my mom told me to just apply, just see where it goes. And I did. And I'm so grateful that I did because it has changed my life. And I think as Marcus has alluded to, kids are wrong sometimes. <laughs> you as adults have wisdom. And Again, the issue here is bridging that gap and letting kids see that. So be inspiring, help your kid find the courage within themselves, and then they can let that shine. Thank you. So moving on to our next question, and some of you may have alluded to this, but how or has uh, being in the TLC changed how you speak up and use your voice in your daily life. I feel like being in the TLC has made me a lot more confident as a person. I feel like getting to know so many different people and finding so many like-minded people on the TLC is very like, it makes it makes it feel like um, change is really possible. Is but and I feel like it makes me believe in change. And because of that, I feel like um, that is not all that has like impacted my ability to believe in myself outside of like social interaction, but also like in my academics. And I feel like it's very important. Some ways I've grown or some ways, yeah, some ways I've grown during or being in the TLC is by working in a team that sometimes I'm not too good with working with others, but joining the TLC, I've learned to work with others and I've learned to take on my own responsibilities and yeah, mostly just working in a team. Alrighty, it looks like we're ready for another question. Uh, what has the experience been like learning with youth from other schools and backgrounds? I think it's been a great experience working with other teens from different schools. It's allowed me to meet a lot of different people and different perspectives from a lot of different communities and a lot of different people that I would not have met without the TLC. And so I think it's just been a great experience overall. And it's been inspiring to meet new people and hear all the different perspectives. And I made a lot of friends, so that's a bonus too. I think personally for me, um, kind of just echoing off of what Aiden said, I've been able to meet a lot of new people, but also I feel like sometimes it can feel a little like secluded in my own school environment and only like being around the same people all the time. Um, and although I do like have a lot of friends and connections there, I think that just reaching um, kind of like members within the TLC that come from like all across Minnesota and like Western Wisconsin and kind of just like seeing that although we come from different areas, we 
kind of have similar goals of like wanting to achieve some sort of like health equity and educate ourselves on different aspects of health and all those different dimensions, like the social determinants of health and things like that. And so I think it's been really impactful to see how, although we have like various diverse backgrounds and diverse perspectives as to how to reach our goals within the team leadership council, we're still able to come together um, even though we're from all these different places. Alrighty. This next question asks, do you talk with your friends about TLC and do you share the learnings with them? Uh, I've told most or a lot of my friends about the TLC and a lot of them have considered signing up for next year because they also enjoy learning about the topics that we learn about, especially mental health. And they would like to like deepen their knowledge on it a little a lot and yeah I think there might be a few people that I know signing up next year. Zainab can speak to this. Um, we were on a Zoom call for TLC at school and our friends were like what you doing there <laughs> and you know we explained it and I think it's kind of inspiring to our friends and I think that's great. Um, yeah, so for me, I've like told a lot of my friends and some of my friends from school are actually on the Teen Leadership Council. And I think that um, kind of whenever I tell my friends about this kind of activity, they always find it like really intriguing and they're actually like taken aback and bewildered, but like in a good way because there aren't a lot of like team-led councils a lot of the different activities that my friends and I partake in are like adult-led and so seeing we really live by like being a team leadership council as we're the ones who are being the leaders and so I think that it's also a unique activity that a lot of my friends have actually considered joining. Alrighty, so I think we have a couple teens either in the room or online who are interested in applying. So a couple questions is first, is the TLC open for any age or geographic region in Minnesota? And then uh, just asking for each of you to share about your application experience and maybe where you heard the word about the TLC. Um, to answer the first question, the TLC is open for or like high school only, I think. Yeah. And I think it's um, just Minnesota and Western Wisconsin due to obviously like not being able to make it because of geographic difference. And um, I actually applied the day before applications were due. <laughs> and it's such it's a very simple, straightforward application process, but it does but going through it, I really did feel like every single factor like necessary to consider was considered while I was applying. And um, I felt like it was a very fair application process. To talk about how we learned about it, for me, our principal just sent out an all-school email, and I was like, oh, this looks interesting. Uh, similarly, not my principal, but my counselor um, told me about it in kind of like this bi-weekly newsletter that she sends out, and it's really funny, actually, because she posted the same thing about the TLC this year. And so I think that, like, had I just, like, scrolled through it on Schoology, which is, like, the platform that my school uses, and not given it too much attention, um, I don't really know where, like, I would be in terms of leadership today. However, um, also in terms of my, like, application experience, I would have to echo off of Zaina. It was pretty straightforward, but I did put a lot of thought into the short answer responses just because it is the first activity that I did that had such a unique form of leadership. Um, and I think that you should definitely consider applying. If you're a high school student, it, you will only grow from the experience. Alrighty. I feel like this will be a favorite amongst the panel because I've heard it come up throughout our program year. 
Is the TLC similar or different from how you learn about health at school? Uh, for me, it's very different because here at the T TLC, we all sit in a room with uh, a consultant or someone who comes, like the, the person from NAMI who came and talked about mental health with us. It's very different because we are like, they're really focused on teaching us and not a big classroom. And we get to ask questions and we're just engaged and they have a bunch of things for us to see and talk about. Um, I feel like it's not too, I, I think they're very different things, at least in my school, the health curriculum. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's perfect because I don't think anything can be, but it's not like, uh, it's not bad by any means. I do think it has a lot to work on and a lot that can be improved. But I think one reason I really enjoy the TLC is because what we learn about health wise is things we want to talk about. And um, while that is also true, we also um, get to learn about things we might not learn about in school, like especially with mental health. I would echo what Zainab has to say that it's really a depth of knowledge a depth of understanding that we gain from talking with these specialists. Uh, we got to uh, work with a public health leader in uh, who taught us about diet culture and um, that kind of stuff. And I think getting that kind of deep dive into these specific topics is something that you don't get in your standard health curriculum. Because again, like Zainab is saying, it's not perfect. It's a teacher with you know, however many students, and you can't cover these kinds of specialized topics that we have chosen to learn about. And I think that's what's really impactful about learning about health from TLC. Yeah, and I also think just a quick thing to add on is a lot of the things that I have personally learned about um, in the TLC um, in terms of health that's different from school is that I think that in school, there's just a lot of lecturing, whereas in the TLC, there's a lot of like conversations. And so if we don't necessarily understand something, we'll talk through it based on our own personal experiences and perspectives, which has allowed me to kind of shed light towards like things that have influenced my way of thinking about health. And we've also learned about like the social determinants of health, which is basically anything that isn't medical that is kind of going to be affecting teenagers' health. And I think that with all of our different experiences, that is something that's really important to talk about and not necessarily only the nutrition aspect of health that we typically um, have a primary focus on within school. Just to echo everything that everyone has said, I think the biggest thing that is different is that teens are allowed to have their own perspective are allowed to contribute to the conversation about health in school it's often just being taught whereas on the TLC we're allowed to have those conversations and that's something that's really powerful and that's really been helpful for all of us so we kind of have a supplemental question uh, for this um, discussion that you guys are having so do you have any suggestions about how to transform education and schooling? So that is kind of tailored to what you all are talking about. I think kind of bringing in that aspect of teen engagement is a, a big uh, part of education that would help because like everyone has been talking about tonight, youth have something to say and when we're just being lectured to that isn't really helpful to our learning and it isn't helpful to the adults learning either so I think changing education systems to help us with learning about ourselves about our opinions and learning how to share them I think that can be impactful I think a better balance of like curriculum versus conversation would like 
vastly impact um because i think when teens get to talk about things they're interested in or specific issues that deal with them it really impacts their ability to like understand and comprehend um certain like topics uh kind of just echoing off of what max and Zainab said, uh, I think that one way to improve school's curriculum um, in health is really engaging teens in the content that they're learning. Um, from personal experience in my health class that everyone is required to take at my school in 10th grade, there that was the least favorite class, to say the least, um, for a lot of the teens. And a lot of my friends are actually really interested in going to healthcare, but the class in itself was put in a way where there was right and wrong answers to how to deal with health and anything outside of what we were learning was essentially deemed as um, unacceptable. And I thought that kind of having that barrier made teens feel like health was only one thing and that's what the adults were saying. That's what our teachers were telling us on a day-to-day -day basis. However, I think that if we shift that perspective to actually making health about other people's experiences and allowing their perspectives to kind of really guide what healthcare is like today, that would be much more impactful than just putting on a lecture of slideshows that was made years ago and can probably be kind of improved throughout um, our education. You guys knocked that one out of the park. <laughs> Alrighty, so we're kind of getting this similar question in different forms. So I'm gonna do my best to kind of lump them all together. So um, generational issues and expectations. So I know Marcus kind of touched on it a little bit in his keynote. Uh, you all mentioned some issues that are very important to teens right now. What are you seeing, if anything, um, differences in generations, issues, and how adults can support teens in dealing with issues that they're experiencing that maybe the adults didn't necessarily experience? Um, and another way, I guess, to kind of spin that question is how do the gener generational expectations affect you and how do you respond to them? Um, so I think mental health is a big thing that is a divide. Um, there's still a stigma with mental health. And I think especially with older generations, um, given the fact that maybe they weren't able to get help with that. And so with that newly coming um, recently with more openness to mental health resources and to more conversations about mental health. I think that's allowed there to be better conversations between older generations and younger generations. I feel like largely when it comes to issues teens are concerned about, there's just a different generational perception of certain things. So I feel like the biggest thing that adults can do for us teens is to address things with an open mind, because sometimes, um, for example, sometimes things that were socially acceptable in the 90s are not socially acceptable right now. And I think as a result, just keeping an open mind and while we are addressing some things will vastly like help us help <laughs> will help us sorry will help us like help you understand some things um i also think adding on to um what aiden and zainab said uh a lot of the times whenever i'm talking with like me and my friends or just me personally, I have a lot of like whys and a lot of concerns with just like things that are so definite. Like I like to know why something is the way that it is. And I feel like a lot of the times when I speak with adults, they just 
say what the thing is and they don't really need any reasoning to kind of believe that or instill that and I try to understand both perspectives but I also think that um, adults can be like more open-minded um, kind of like what was mentioned before about what children are thinking so at least there can be a balanced perspective of like understanding where the child is coming from and really making sure that their questions aren't going unanswered. To sum that up, cut because I said so from your vocabulary. <laughs> All righty. Well, I think we're going to wind down to our last and final uh, question for this evening, just due to time. Um, so each year we have uh, I don't know, about half and half or quarter and three-fourths. Um, some students leave us and they go off to college or to do other amazing things and uh, flourish. And some uh, will return next year and continue to do amazing things at the TLC. My question to you is what advice do you have for future students in the TLC? My advice is just try something new because... <laughs> because you'll never know if you like it if you don't try it. Because some of the things that we did in the TLC, I didn't even know if I really wanted to do it, but just by trying it, found out that I actually liked it. I think the best thing you can do for yourself as a member of the TLC is to just embrace things. Like, because everyone there is there because they want to. And, um, you really are in control of what you learn about, what you talk about, and what you experience there. So just like going into it and having fun is literally the best thing you can do for yourself. My advice would be to focus on what you're passionate about. Because like Zainab was saying, you have the ability to shape what the TLC does. And I think that's a very valuable power that you hold as a member of the TLC and if you throw that away and you just decide to show up to meetings and you don't really engage then what are you doing there you chose to come and be a part of this leadership council so take a stand and show leadership for what you're passionate about I agree with what everyone else said but also I would like to kind of enhance or give advice on um, really just being willing to listen to others. Everyone on the TLC is coming from different backgrounds. We're all relatively around the same age, although four years in high school does make kind of a drastic change in our mindsets. However, um, I think that one thing that's really beneficial is kind of just keeping an open mind and really making sure that you're listening to what others have to say. And by listening, really making sure that you're taking that into account when you think about a scenario and just kind of being willing to looking at something in a different perspective. You don't always have to change your mind, but at least give people that chance to talk and give yourself a chance to listen and to change. Yeah, let's give a round of applause. <laughs> I would say that, like Zainab said, everyone who's on the TLC really wants to be here. And so with that, you can have really genuine and real conversations and interactions. And that has allowed us to learn a lot more from each other and to open our perspectives. And so that's been a really great part of the TLC. Alrighty. Well, I think just encore of applause one more time for our team panelists. Uh, each of you, feel free to return to your seats if you would like. We'll go ahead and transition on to our next agenda item. Um, but as they're getting situated, I just want to thank each of you for participating on tonight's panel. use the loud mic now. Um, and to all of our teen leadership council members, um, I know I personally learned so much from each of you over the course of this program year. 
Uh, you are all truly remarkable, and it has been an honor to watch you grow into such incredible leaders. So thank you. And now I'm going to hand off the baton to Marna Canterbury, who will be giving us our closing remarks. Well, I think I have the hardest job today, which is following that panel and that discussion. So another really great attitude to all of you. You know, those mic drop moments, we could just do that <laughs> and end. But what I do want to do is spend a few minutes just reflecting on what I've been hearing. Hasn't the call to all of us been to listen? I know that as adults, we're hearing that, and I really appreciate the comments about listening to each other as teams, that ability to find better solutions, more energy, passion through listening. And because this is really also about all of your calls to action for adults, I heard it clearly through everything. I've just been trying to write down words as people have been talking. Here's some of the things I heard. It's about learning. I heard learning from each other, learning from being on part of this team. That volunteering aspect that you shared, it seems like you were talking about how that helped you see your communities maybe in a new way. The also how clearly you articulated being part of your communities, how you were seeing communities, you were seeing social needs, you were seeing the complexity of the thing we call health how wise at, again, I think many of us reflect at your similar age, there's no way I, or maybe even my adult children had that perspective. So congratulations for listening and learning. The other piece you all really seem to highlight was the inequities that you see and your passion and your commitment to continuing to speak up and advocate around those inequities Thank you for that. You also talked very directly to us as adults. And Marcus, you spoke very directly to all of us as adults to listen with all capital letters. It's really a big word when we think about it, right? To truly listen, to truly hear. And then instead of responding, to ask more questions, to learn more insights, to hear what's being said. As adults, I think that should challenge us to both think differently and act with the youth voice in mind, alongside of powerful teen leaders like you and others. What an amazing opportunity you are giving our community by participating and by using your voice and speaking up. So thank you, all of you, for that voice that you bring. And often behind the scenes, I also want to thank the core staff that's been making it possible and setting the table for you to have these conversations. Andrea, stand up. Kristen and Jade, who you just met, these three have been tireless advocates. If you want to know if they're listening, they are, because they come back and tirelessly advocate with adults to say, here's an example, there's a consulting opportunity. Um, uh, we'd like to talk to the Teen Leadership Council. And the response is, we would be glad to bring that opportunity to them for consideration. So I want you to know you're impacting us. You're impacting how we do our work. And these three do a lot of credit for listening and acting on, your, on behalf of what you've said. And then if we can just go to the last slide. Again, we hope this is a call to action for all of us. We have ways that we can all join this effort. Um, again, as I described consulting opportunities, 
if you and your organization or your community have things and you're thinking, we would like to hear youth voice on that, we can certainly present that opportunity <laughs> to the Teen Leadership Council for them to consider and consult. It's been powerful when we've had that opportunity. There's some contact info there. It's actually Andrea in the back and her email is up there as well. The other piece is you can support as an advisor if you have wisdom to share, if you have a passion around this issue, again, reach out to us to see how we can get you involved. And you can also support the work in other ways. We um, do charitable giving around this. We work with foundations and others who share this goal and this purpose around empowering all of you and teens like you. You can also share this opportunity with schools and teens in your life to get more students involved, broad community, broad perspectives, the broader, the better. So again, please share these opportunities. I'd also just like to close by thanking everyone here for taking the time to listen. I hope that it sparked something in each of us to hear and to know the potential of the words of this next generation, because they really are, as Marcus was talking about, a great generation that has faced really impossible to describe challenges in three years of their adolescent life. What wisdom has been um, spawned in them, planted in them because of those experiences? I also really, Marcus, want to thank you for sharing your expertise, your wisdom, and your advocacy call to action to all of us. Thank you for sharing this and partnering with us in this work. With all of that, we would love to close for this evening with one last warm applause for our teen leaders and all those who support them. Thank you so much. Oh, and I'm supposed to tell you about the QR code on the screen to be sure to hear from you uh, for future events and for this program. Thank you again. Ready for you. It's like sit in the chair. Yeah. 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 I think I'm oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know It was just like, 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 just like